Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, we are, so I mean, this is basically going to be, you know, a, a, a very strong mimic of what we've, what we've been having for quite some time now. Um, I'll be completely honest with you. I, I don't really know what the issue is. And I say that in like a, a, a completely true way. Um, I don't know if it's because people may find the market boring. I don't know if it's because maybe as we have not, you know, hit brand new $89,000 Bitcoin numbers... Maybe people are just eyeing the market from the sides and trying to decide uh, what to do. Um, I, I've, I've said this more times than I even imagined that I would at the beginning of this year. I've been doing this channel for a very long time. And long ago, and I mean a good like seven years ago, the, the market would have gone completely insane. Like actually lost its mind for even a fragment of this kind of news. One of the original ideas was that Bitcoin at some point was going to take over the world. I, I think we've lost a large part of that understanding of what it actually means. Because, and I don't know if the word even applies here, but it's more of a, um, I think a lot of people within crypto, and I don't even mean people outside of the market, that's a completely different monolith that we have to deal with but people inside of the market don't really seem to understand what's going on when you talk about the adoption rate of bitcoin and how it's constantly going up all the time you might remember we've spoken about this before with the thousands of people who are getting into the market every single day We've even seen sometimes like six figures. There's been over 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 new wallets created like in a day who've gotten into the Bitcoin market. When you talk about the the institutional interest, and, and I'm, I'm not talking about the the uh, Black Rocks and the Fidelities right now. I'm, I'm talking about just like normal base, you know, air quotes, basics, companies who are worth like a couple billion dollars who've been buying Bitcoin announced that they were in the space. It seems that the more news that we get that's actually like cataclysmic and like completely otherworldly to what we've had before in the past, the more blase that people become about it. I was actually quite shocked. And you, you might remember at the beginning of the year when we got word that we actually did have uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs. I, I wasn't shocked at the price drops because there, there, there's always the initial drop and sell the news and all this other stuff. But just how few people within the cryptocurrency space even knew what BlackRock was. Not that you should be like, you know, bowing down to them, but it's more of a a, a, a question of numbers and what they're capable of and who they're talking to. I've seen a lot of, I, and I mean over the years, I've seen so many times when we get news about something, whether it be the United States holding Bitcoin, the countries who are holding Bitcoin, who are mining Bitcoin, who are using Bitcoin for trade amongst themselves. That by itself is already hyper-revolutionary. I don't think... And it's probably only 1% of listeners who actually understand the significance of what it means for a currency that's been out for 15 years to be, like, adopted. Like, literally worldwide adopted. And I think it once again comes down to the actual price. We just had news, and I mean, I think it was yesterday. We just had news from Fidelity uh, who announced that they are in contact with companies, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, for 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 pension funds, for like retirement funds, who are also thinking about getting into and who are entering the cryptocurrency space and will be buying uh, Bitcoin and or through the actual spot ETFs. When we get this news, I expect more hype. 
it's 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 gotten to the point where I'm increasingly frustrated. Now understand this isn't me pointing a finger, it's just more of a I keep asking the question, what is it going to take for people to really understand it? And I don't think that there's an actual answer that anyone can give me. I, I, I think we've just simply gotten to that point where we're just like walking around in the dark looking for the price to go higher so that people can actually like pay attention once again. We live in a world where, and I think maybe people have just been trained to be this way. We live in a world where regardless of how much money you see people are making in the stock market, are making in real estate, are making in equities, are making in securities, you're going to have the masses not really care. And, and once again, I think that is because we've been trained to be this way. We're trained to look at uh, these these posters and these ads outside and to buy things and to constantly... It's 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 the idea. It's, it's actually quite dark. It's the idea that if you don't have a lot, if you don't have a lot of money, if you're scrounging or you know just getting by, your thought isn't on let me save these pennies to eventually buy an asset or to eventually buy a house. You're thinking of let me do something nice for myself so that I can basically make time go by. And when you get into a situation where your rent is increasing, groceries are increasing, everything is becoming more expensive, your last thought then goes to, oh my gosh, you know, I, I can't wait to save this money to buy an asset. It goes into like kind of like a, what we would call survival mode, but then we're also told also to continuously buy things to consume in order to help the economy as opposed to helping ourselves. Like I said, I, 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 I think we're taught this and have been taught this. Uh, basically our entire lives, especially if you're from the States, I'm from the States, if you couldn't tell. Um, it just, it just, it's just part of the actual equation. My issue is, is that the people who are telling us to buy these, buy these things to continue to consume are getting richer and richer all the time. And these are the same exact people who are deflecting when people ask them about Bitcoin. And they, 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 they mirror away any type of thing when it comes to the idea, when you ask them their opinion of Bitcoin or what people should be doing, they never say like save more because it would ruin their business and it would ruin the wealth that they actually have. Okay, so understand that we have entered into a, a new era and I'm not sure if it began January 1st of 2020. I'm not sure if it began in mid-2022 with the entire FTX collapse and hearing that these larger companies were looking to get into the space. I'm not sure if it began upon the introduction of the um, spot Bitcoin ETFs within the United States. I'm not really sure exactly when. I can't pinpoint the exact time. But understand that the world is changing right in front of us very, very rapidly. I, 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 and, and I almost need you to understand at this point. Like, it's almost like hyper imperative for the actual success of your economic future. I know that sounds really intense, but you need to understand that Bitcoin has only been around for 15 years and the news that we're getting is not normal. The news that we're getting of adoption and who's getting into Bitcoin and who's buying Bitcoin is completely insane. And I think even this is this is a, a slight mimic, a slight mimic to the end of 21, 2021 and 2022, where a lot of the news that we were getting is that institutions were in the space and they were buying Bitcoin. And if you might remember, one of the problems that was happening is that the price was going down. And I kept on telling people it's because a lot of these institutions they wanted the price to go down. They needed the price to go down for them to be able to buy at a better price. It doesn't make sense for them to buy at 70000 when they can get the price pushed down and get you out of the market. Push the price down to 20000 lower once again. And then there was still, like, there, 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 there's never not been a day where they haven't been accumulating. It's, it's just been a, a complete constant. And I remember when prices were going down, people become very discouraged because people only pay attention to the prices. They're not paying attention to anything else. And it's only like really, really hardcore people in the space. When they see prices going down, they're like, this is a great opportunity for me to buy. 
Because swirling around their head is all the news that we've been getting over the course of the last couple of years. I see tons of people always on Twitter. Prices go down. They're like, this is it. I get my chance to buy more. This is, a, you know, this is a very low price compared to where we were and to where we're going to be. So without me rambling on, because I, 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 can, I can keep going on, you, 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 you understand that something is, is up, right? You understand that the progression that we've had in 15 years for Bitcoin is absolutely staggering. Everyone gets that, right? Like, I'm not the only one sitting here being like, well, 15 years is more than enough. You know how long it takes for, like, a company to even establish themselves? Sometimes it takes decades for that to happen. And, we, and we've had news that these companies have been in the Bitcoin space for a while, building up the structure be behind the scenes that only they can see and having these talks and these discussions as to how much and when they should accumulate so that they can have more than everyone else on the planet. We've entered into a world where Bitcoin's market cap, it is now a, a, a trillion dollar asset. It is going to become multi-trillion and we are going to probably, it, it, it was, uh, you know, the, the discussion was back in 2018, 2019, we are probably going to see the world's first trillionaire because of the cryptocurrency space. Like literally because of their allocation of money into crypto, they're going to become a trillionaire. So when this news popped up, I saw that it was popular, but it wasn't the, the term's not taken seriously. People kind of used it as a, oh, that's cool. Well, the price is about to go back up kind of news, as opposed to really understanding what this meant. Do you know what it means for a company and companies, like the news we got from Fidelity, to announce that they're buying Bitcoin for their retirement funds? And they essentially plan on holding it for 50 to 100 years. That's how, you know, retirement funds, they hold on to these assets and watch them grow so that the people who have invested with them have more money than they had before to be able to take out for their retirement. People don't get it. People aren't understanding what's happening. It's this, it's this fixation on the price. The price needs to move. The price has to go up. It's... it's you don't, I mean, for those of you who have a YouTube channel and what have you, you can even see your channel's metrics. YouTube is is very an, hyper-analytical now, like even to a fault sometimes. It's just like so much information that's there. I can see in real time and over the course of a week and over the course of a month, if prices have dipped by 4%, my views go down by a good 7 8% at the exact same time. Like I can see my views dropping because the prices aren't pumping. There's no, there's no connection for these people that the price went down, let me get some more because amazing things are happening within the space. It's, it's the prices have gone down, let me abandon the market. I don't care about the news anymore. I don't wanna be informed. I don't wanna learn anymore until the price goes back up and then these people refomo back into the market because they could have bought at, at a lower price. It's, a, it's amazing to see this actual information. And I, and I always make sure to say, the craziest part for me is that this is the news that like hits us. Understand like any information that's happening behind closed doors that we end up getting wind of is a fragment of a fragment of what's actually taking place. Like we are not privy to like the actual real news and how much money is flowing around. We get fragments of everything that's going on. So this news popped up once again. And all I saw was people talking about the the numbers and so and so and so. And it's like, you don't get that we've won. Bitcoin is here forever now. There's no escaping this. Like the roots of Bitcoin are so deep already in the financial sector that there's no getting rid of it. And this is only going to increase more and more. By the time we pass by a six-figure Bitcoin, the frenzy of people who are going to be in this market and trying to get further in this market and the new ETFs that are going to launch and the other pension funds who are going to be getting into this space, you can't rip and extract Bitcoin from that system because Bitcoin is part of it. So the news popped out that uh, BlackRock came forward, one of their key managers, one of the higher-ups, said that apparently um, there are a number of countries, there are a number of, of big money investors, sovereign wealth funds, 
Those are like the actual wealth funds of the country. So we even, and I, and I mean, people look over this so easily. We even heard before that there are certain Nordic countries, even before the ETFs came out, there were multiple Nordic countries who actually were like indirectly holding Bitcoin because people looked through all the funds and things that they were holding. And these Nordic countries, the Northern countries in Europe were holding, um, um, Grayscale uh, um, Bitcoin shares, like huge amounts of them. And I remember that news and I was like, this is it. Like, this is the moment that people are going to be like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. No, the news went by, was barely even popular. I know this is formatted very weird. Some websites don't know how to get it together. And the the, 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 the spacing is all over the place. Um, someone named Robert Michnik from BlackRock, he's the head of Bitcoin and crypto strategies, recently shared that a diverse group of financial institutions are quite keen on Bitcoin. This includes pensions, endowments, insurers, asset managers, and family offices. The company is seeing these firms engage in thorough research and ongoing discussion about Bitcoin. They are contributing by educating them on the crypto industry Mitchnick told Coindesk, this surge in interest marks a resurgence in Bitcoin discussion, yada, 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 so and so and so. And then it starts talking about the slowdown in the actual ETFs. You know how many websites I found this news on? It wasn't a lot. And the main thing that they kept on talking about was the ETF slowdown and how this is so and so and this might. And it's like, do you understand the words that this man said? And I had to I had to search around to find exactly what it was because every other website shifted topic constantly, not talking about what this man even spoke about. He said many of these interested firms, whether we're talking about pensions, endowments, sovereign wealth funds, insurers, or other asset managers, family offices are having ongoing diligence and research conversations and we're playing a role from an education perspective he said, the interest is not new. BlackRock has been talking about Bitcoin to these sorts of institutions for several years. When we first got, do you, if, if you've been here for a while, I'm sure you remember this. We got news of BlackRock entering, there were air quotes there, the cryptocurrency space at the end of 2023 when they were applying for their spot Bitcoin ETF. And I remember being in the news and I was like, that's not that's not correct at all because we had new I mean you can look it up for yourself. There were news articles back from 2017 that said that BlackRock was already in the space. And I remember it, it, talking about it over the course of multiple videos and everyone was like no it's it's not true like it's not in the news and I'm like do you understand how big money works? The fact that this guy came forward and even if he had just nothing else, it had just mentioned the words sovereign wealth funds, Bitcoin's price should have literally pumped off of the idea that there are literal countries. The wealth of these countries, their wealth funds, are investing in Bitcoin. Do you know what it takes, the, the, the amount of discussions and the years, and even, even to hear that these countries have been talking about this for years? Do you know how governments work? You know that they just don't share information with everyone, right? You understand that family offices, family offices, for those of you who don't know, and especially like family wealth management firms, they usually only accept, accept, accept families who have more than like 10, 15, 20 million dollars to invest at any given time. And that's like on the lower end. They won't look in your direction unless you have at least 20 million dollars liquid to be able to invest with them. I like I can't believe it. Like I can't believe that this is that this is what the cryptocurrency space is. It's just hype. It's just like momentary fascination about something as opposed to like actual longevity. I told you before, I think it's I think it's because a lot of people in the space are new to finance. And I and I, I know it takes a long time to actually form I don't want to say form a diamond. That's that's very cringy, but to like really understand like the prospectus for what it means to be in it for a long term, there's not going to be any Bitcoin left for people. 
And it's so frustrating to see it happening like right in front of us. And then once again, I know, I know three, four, five percent of you are are buying and you're paying attention. I've seen the comment section. I know I'm waving. I'm I'm literally waving like saying hello to all of you. You can't see it, but it's so disheartening to really try and like make people understand what's going on. And the vast majority just literally don't care. The moment prices go back up, everyone's back in the game. Everyone's, yeah, yeah, money, 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 money. And prices go down a little, I mean, four, five, six percent. Bitcoin fell down, what was it, to like $62,000? And people like left the market. Even crazy, I don't, I don't, I don't have the article right here. Um, JP Morgan Chase uh, had like a report about the cryptocurrency market over the course of the last four to five weeks. And they were talking about the movement of money. Do you know, I'll give you a wild guess. When prices were going down and the reason prices went down even more, do you know who was selling? It was retail investors. It was normal people. They looked through the wallet addresses and they were even looking through the actual allocations of money that was in some of the ETF funds around the world. And they found that the vast majority of people who were selling were people who had one or two shares of an ETF, who had fragments of Bitcoin, who had been in the market for two, three, four months. It's always the same. It's the same flush out over and over and over. I'll, and I cannot and will never, ever tell you what to do with your money, but gosh darn it, anyone selling right now is insane. I understand if maybe you need the money, and this is why I always say, do not put money into this market that you cannot afford to lose. Upon hearing, upon seeing the insane amount of interest, the money that was flowing into ETFs every single day, and is still flowing into them, the ETFs collectively within the United States are usually pulling in around 400 or 450 Bitcoin per day plus. Like that's the amount of Bitcoin that's mined entirely in the day is being accumulated by these companies, just them. That's no, no, no one else. All the other figures are, of course, a lot higher. It's mo many multiples of the daily amount of Bitcoin that's being created is still being absorbed. But it's not in the news because it's not half a billion per day. It's not 700 million per day, 889 million. So people go, oh, well, you know, I guess Bitcoin's done. We have proof and have had proof for years that governments have been in the space. Is it that people need exact numbers? Do you need to know that there are 27 countries who each hold over two, three, four, five, seven thousand Bitcoin? The fact that we got this information at all is crazy. These governments are not going to announce how much Bitcoin they have because it starts a literal frenzy of other people of other countries trying to buy. For years, these institutions have been talking to BlackRock. Remember the part where but 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 BlackRock has only been into crypto since since October 2023. It's happening right in front of our eyes and I know I'm I'm constantly Going over feverishly over the same points over and over, but people people need to get it together. That like and it and I was gonna say the words like this won't last forever, and it's because it's true. Look at where our price was a year ago. Look at where our price was a year and a half ago. And a lot of times, I have one one of my uh, best friends. We were we were looking at the market one day, and he did that thing on like you can do it on all on all price things where you zoom out for the entire year. And he was saying, he was, he was chatting with someone and they were talking about how the gains in the, in the, the, you know, gains in the cryptocurrency market uh, weren't as amazing as they were hoping. And then he said he zoomed out for an entire year because he said all he was looking at was on a weekly basis, some coin had gone up by 4%. But he was like, most of the altcoins have actually doubled in price in the last year. He's like, I, I didn't get any of that on any other investment that I have. And then he was like, even more so for Bitcoin. Look at how much it's gone up in such a short period of time. So this is once again just a, I guess, a, I was going to say lighthearted discussion. No, this was a heavy-hearted discussion. 
about what's going on within the space, within this market, what's actually happening, the news that we're getting. Because it, it means so much. Even, the, even right here, there's a tweet right here. It says, breaking BlackRock says sovereign wealth funds, pension funds and endowments are coming to Bitcoin. No, he said they've been talking to them for years. The institutions aren't coming, they're here. And they're absorbing as many coins as they possibly can. We get news from the largest cryptocurrency mining operations that world banks. Do you remember this news? That major banks around the world are coming to them, asking them, we need to buy Bitcoin from you because there's not a lot left for us to buy. And that, and that does nothing. That does nothing to the minds of the retail and normal people who are in this market. Put two and two together and you're going to get a million. What happens when we already have multiple countries who are mining Bitcoin, who are using Bitcoin, who are trading with Bitcoin? When you have pension funds who are buying and allocating Bitcoin and Bitcoin ETFs to their funds for decades. Pension funds don't buy assets. Or securities to go in, in six months, eh, I, don't I don't like it anymore. They're seeing the longevity in the market. And I wonder why no one else is. Throw into the equation sovereign wealth funds. For those of you, sovereign wealth funds have trillions of dollars attached to them like each. These are funds for the wealth of the country. When you talk, like the allocations of what these countries buy, for those of you who don't know and are completely unaware, countries are basically buying up all as much land and as much property as they can, but usually shh, shh, very, very, very hush, hush. The idea of an allocation into Bitcoin, the thing that we know is going to take over the U.S. dollar and gold and other countries are actively buying into it. Do you understand what de-dollarization means and hyper-Bitcoinization stands for? Any allocation, a $1 allocation by a sovereign wealth fund indicates a loss of trust in fiat currencies and in the U.S. dollar. Because that $1 could have gone into the U.S. markets. The conversations that these people are having amongst themselves that we sometimes hear from Kathy Wood and, and Michael Novogratz and all these other people, when they say that they know the people who are getting into the market and the amount of money that the people are allocating into it, and we hear them say, yeah, Bitcoin's going to be a million dollars in the next five and a half years. Why does that do nothing to you? Why does that not light a literal digital fire under you? I find it mind-boggling. Having been in this space for so long, I don't know if it's a lack of immediate interest. I don't know if it's because if you don't see it immediately, it means nothing to people. Do you remember when Bitcoin's price was at $16,000, one six thousand? We were getting reports that Bitcoin was going back to 30,000 and the news around that time was like, no, Bitcoin has to fall down to five in order for it to move back up. And I was like, no, Bitcoin gets to 29,000. People are like, Bitcoin's going to 45,000. The amount of articles were like, mm, yeah, and people, people still weren't realizing that we had gone from 16 to, to, to 29,000, 29 to 45. People were calling for a maximum $50,000 Bitcoin by December of this year. We at 70-something thousand fall down and people go, mm, yeah, mm, oh, well, you know. Do you need, do you need, do you need world leaders from 15 different countries to stand on stage, hold hands, and sing a song written about Bitcoin? Like, what more do you actually need to understand that Bitcoin has won? Because what's happening right now is not normal. 
This means that they know far more than they're letting on. The allocations of money that we've even... You know how much half a billion dollars per day is to go into any asset class? Boy, 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 boy. Yeah, so as always, the the next step is essentially Bitcoin rising in price and going up higher and people seeing it and then going, ah, I remember hearing that news. Of course, that was going to happen. What are you what are you going to do? If Bitcoin at some point reaches parity with the U.S. dollar, let's say the year is 2046, and one Satoshi is the equivalent to what we know as then the U.S. dollar, and people who own only 3 million Satoshis have the equivalent of, 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 of $3 million, what are you going to do? Like, what's going to go through your mind when you realize that all this news that we've been getting was leading up to something? And I even, <laughs> I'll even go back, uh, way back in time. What are you going to do when Bitcoin hits a million dollars? Yeah, so major, major news. People paid attention, but the vast majority of the news was, I, 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 I kid you not, was talking about the ETFs and how this is happening and money hasn't been flowing into them like it was before. And it's, and it's like, you didn't get a word this man says. Yeah. So I think that's going to do it for this video. Give myself a chance to rest. Um, I tip my hat in the direction of everyone who's been paying attention because something major, like, and th 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 this isn't like small major. This is like a seismic shift in everything that we've known about finance and what we've known about money. The amount of articles that I still see floating around talking about gold and buying gold. And it's like, are you crazy? We can see the numbers of how well that Bitcoin has performed against every other asset. It's just a matter of time at this point. It's literally just a matter of time. If things play out the way that they've historically played out uh, when it comes to after the halving, by next May of 2025, we, we, should, we should have our, our answer by then. Because people at that point are, were calling for a $200,000, $300,000 Bitcoin. And I'm very excited. Cannot wait for the news to see what happens when one Bitcoin is worth more than a home. I think that's going to uh, send people into a frenzy. Yeah. So I think that's going to do it for this video. I do hope that you've all enjoyed in some sort of way. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.